Alfred the Great by Justin Pollard. Overview. Alfred was England's first king, and his rule spanned troubled times. As his shores sat under constant threat from Viking marauders, his life was similarly imperiled by conspiracies in his own court. He was an extraordinary character, a soldier, scholar, statesman like no other in English history. And out of the adversity, he forged a new kind of nation. Justin Pollard's enthralling account strips back centuries of myth to reveal the individual behind the legend. He offers a radical new interpretation of what inspired Alfred to create England and how it has colored the nation's history to the present day. Review. The danger of homeschooling children is that you end up finding a historical figure who seems really interesting and grabs the imagination as someone who is unique for his or her time. This goes for Alfred the Great for me. While it seems that most people, in the UK at least, know him for two stories, one of graciously being scolded by a peasant woman for being inattentive over some baked bread, and another for challenging himself to read in a very early age to gain a book, it also seems that these two stories are only attributed to him, but probably didn't happen. What makes him more interesting is that he embodies a hero's journey in his rule and his encouraging of learning and reading of his people. Pollard's book has an ironic nature to its strength, being one of the greatest weaknesses, also depending on why you're you're reading it, as someone who doesn't know about the time, the 9th or 10th century or place, uh, which is Wessex and then uh, England in general. This provides a lot of background information on the culture, history, and people groups of society. While this book isn't extraordinarily long and does require uh, and does read quite quickly, it provides a lot of background information, so much so that the title character of the book, Alfred, tends to kind of get lost in a number of pages. It takes a run-up to his life and rule, which is appreciated. However, once you get into the wars with the Vikings, you almost kind of forget what you're reading about. And yet, understanding just how formidable the Vikings were and the nuance that they enacted against king, country, and the people is impressive. Also, the discussion on how women had a different role that the, quote, subject of men of their fathers, unquote, that we think about was the status throughout history in the West was really interesting and put rightly of the time into perspective. It's just not the case. It's not the case that they're subject to the, to the, the men and the fathers. Really interesting. Also, the idea that absolute monarchy wasn't a thing until much, much later is seen in lesser magistrates coming together and kicking Alfred out of the office of king. Really interesting. Alfred was a young boy who was never would have been king and never wanted to be king, but took on the mantle for his family. He found unique ways to deal with Viking raiders after repossessing the throne. His character, and especially his Christian convictions, is seen throughout the book, and with what little, compared to today, we have uh, of historical knowledge of the time, that is a great testament and challenge to us Christians. As for being a unique character, almost out of his time frame, it would have been interesting to see Alfred 700 years later in the middle of the Reformation to see what he would do. We see his desire for both noble and normal person alike to learn Latin, to learn to read, and to learn to learn. This was done both as an overall uh, increase in life and faith, but also for the betterment of the kingdom and those who would supplant the older generation. There was a lot of current day life lessons we can get from Alfred's rule, reforming the legal system and seeing the theonomy of lesser judges who were encouraged to learn by some, even uh, through the threat of force, to be better judges is an impressive thing to see in the first millennium AD. I would even say that if Alfred's reforms on learning and legalism and leadership had continued well into the second millennium, the advancement of the West would have been even greater than what we saw. So while the details can be a little overwhelming and not Alfred-centric, the second half of the book really centers on him and just how amazing and interesting of a life he led. The sad tale at the start of the book of a number of lost works of antiquity is almost heartbreaking. A study in the life of Alfred would be a good study for any father or church leader or community leader. Seeing the need to build up the next generation from a cultural revolution with a strong leader who provided himself as someone to listen to and trust is a historical truth we can follow. Final grade, B.